Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture that is lecture number 12 of this lecture series on turbo machinery aerodynamics. Uh, I think in the last several lectures we have had a chance to interact and discuss about several aspects of uh, turbo machine, the, term, the thermodynamics associated with uh, turbo machines and uh, uh, particularly related to axial flow compressors. So, in today's lecture and in the next lecture that would be lecture 13, we are going to discuss about very significant aspect, I mean very important aspect which sort of uh, limits the whole operation of the whole engine as a whole and that is to do with the stability of operation of uh, axial compressors. So, we are going to talk about compressor stability and different forms of instability that we see in uh, modern day axial compressors and what are the effects of instability on the compressor performance and also the performance of the engine as a whole. And uh, so we will of course, continue discussion on instability in the next lecture, where we will also be uh, talking about the effect of inflow conditions on the initiation of instabilities as well as the effect of uh, uh, trying to control instabilities and how we can try and control instabilities in axial compressors and what are the implications of this control on the performance of the engine as a whole. So, instability is the major topic that we are going to discuss in today's talk. So, basically we are going to talk about two different modes of instability, we will of course, be talking about that in great detail that is to do with rotating stall and surge. So, these are the two uh, basic aspects of instability we will be talking about. Of course, we will cover instability in general as well in today's talk. Now, um, one of the major issues with the engine operation and uh, and the effect of uh, operate trying to operate under uh, off design conditions is the fact that there is one component which will sort of limit the performance or limit the operation of the whole engine as a whole and that is the compressor. So, compressor is the component which sort of determines the stability and limits of operation of the engine as a whole. Now, in the last class if you remember uh, in one of the last lectures we had discussed about the axial flow compressor performance map. During this um, discussion I think I had mentioned that there are two limits of operation of the axial compressor on the right hand side of the compressor map uh, we have what is known as this um, the choking point or the choke limit which is to do with the maximum mass flow rate and on the left hand side of the uh, compressor map we have what is known as the surge limit or surge margin or uh, the limit to which the surge can occur. So, these are the two bands or regions or lines within which the compressor operation is considered stable or feasible. So, if we try to operate the compressor beyond these limits, the compressor is going to go into instability modes and the operation cannot be um, successfully carried out. And therefore, what we also see is that if you look at the engine as a whole, compressor being one of the major components of the engine, if the compressor enters into an instability mode, obviously that is going to have a detrimental effect on the downstream components like the combustion chamber, therefore the turbine and nozzle and there and so on. So, the stability limits of the compressor will kind of limit the operation of the whole engine and that is why it is very important that we understand what are these different modes of instability and how we can sort of understand the mechanism of these instabilities and see what initiates these instabilities and of course, in subsequent lectures we will also look at how we can attempt to control these instabilities if at all possible. So, compressor instability or the limits of operation of the engine is limited by the operation or range of operation of the compressor itself. So, let us take a look at some of the salient features. As I mentioned, compressor performance obviously is a key factor in the overall engine performance. At a given rotational speed, we know that the maximum mass flow is determined by the choking and as mass flow is uh, throttled, there is an eventual breakdown of the um, stable flow conditions and the stable performance or range of the engine is therefore, dictated by the compressor performance itself. And uh, what we also like to um, understand here is the fact that the an aircraft engine as we know is 
designed to operate for a certain condition which is known as the design condition, but during takeoff to uh, climb and cruise and finally, uh, to land, we see that the engine is operating under a variety of operating conditions. So, how is it that we can kind of ensure that this engine is going to operate stably in all these operating conditions. Now, that is a big challenge for an engineer, for an engine designer, because there are so many components that fit into uh, an aircraft engine and how do you ensure that each of these components will be able to perform well under all these so called off design conditions. And one of the most crucial components amongst all the other components is the compressor, because compressor performance as I mentioned is limited between the choke limit and the surge limit. And there is a certain band which we can use for uh, a stable operation of the compressor. And we do not want the compressor to operate at towards the these two limits or very close to these limits, because you know that will risk the compressor uh, in the event of an off design uh, operation that it might go into the instability modes. Therefore, there is a narrow margin of um, operation of the compressor, which is known as the surge margin. We will discuss that little later as well. That is the band of operation around the design point, where we can say that the compressor operation is stable and compressor is operating in a fairly um, high level of efficiency, because that is another important aspect that you might still be able to operate a compressor at any other given point, but then that would be an operating line where the or operating point where the efficiency is very poor. And so, a poor efficiency of the compressor will also affect or impact the overall efficiency of the engine. We do not want or an engine designer would never want that an, uh, the engine is operating in a poor efficiency zone. So, high efficiency is one of the key parameters and so is the stability of the compressor itself. And surge margin is that margin which engine designer provides or a compressor designer provides, so that the engine can operate in that margin in a stable manner and also with a reasonably high uh, level of efficiency, which is also very crucial for the performance of the engine as a whole. And so, the ability to efficiently operate such an engine at all these operating conditions will also depend upon a successful match of all the components uh, within an engine and also within the stable operating range. So, for example, uh, an engine has as you as you are probably aware and it will typically have an air intake, then a fan or a compressor, then the combustion chamber, turbine and a nozzle. So, there are these are of course, the salient features of um, a so called turbo jet engine. And, uh, so, all these components need to operate in a kind of a synergistic manner in the given operating range as well as under off design conditions, which are expected that which are expected to be encountered by the engine. And the compressor being the key component in all of them, uh, it is very necessary that the engine designer understands the performance of the compressor over a range of these operating conditions. So, what I will do now is um, to quickly go through the compressor map once again. We have discussed that in one of the earlier lectures. Let us take a quick look at that once again and we will also try to see uh, or try to understand what I am currently talking about, what are these uh, different limits that I have been talking about. So, here is a typical compressor map, a typical multi stage compressor map on the y axis we have the pressure ratio and x axis is uh, the corrected mass flow rate, mass flow rate m dot square root of theta by delta, where this is the temperature ratio and this is the normalized um, pressure ratio. So, a typical compressor map will consist of these lines, which correspond to different speeds. So, rotational speed uh, is given by these different lines and we have seen two different limits that I was talking about. One is about choking that is this line here, if you draw a line here that corresponds to the choking limit, because you can see that here beyond this point the mass flow rate does not change and that for a particular speed that is, that is the choking limit. 
On the left hand side, we have a line which I have denoted here as surge line. We will talk about surge in lot more detail in some of the early later uh, slides. This is the surge line compressor operation on the left hand side of this line is unstable because of occurrence of surge. And what is shown here by the dotted line is the engine operating line. Now, engine operating line is the line uh, which the designer has set for a stable operation of the engine at different speeds and the difference between this and the surge line is the surge margin. So, you can see that it is a rather narrow margin it's been slightly exaggerated here. In modern engines, the ma surge margin is kept very narrow because um, the higher efficiency is obtained very close to surge and so surge margin is this difference that you see here. So, this is a typical compressor map and this is going to limit the performance of an engine as a whole because you have so many components, other components in an engine, the uh, turbine, the combustion chamber, the nozzle intake and so on. And so, compressor map will tell us you know what is the kind of limit that we have for operating this uh, engine in a stable manner. So, in the operating line that you saw that is basically corresponding to the line or zone uh, which has been designed by an engineer for a uh, stable operation of the engine. The engine is still allowed to deviate from this operating line by a certain amount, uh, but certainly not beyond the surge margin because that would mean that the compressor has surged and that would also mean that the engine operation is in danger. So, we will discuss about surge a little later. So, the basic intent of this lecture is to understand what are these different instability modes that are um, likely to be encountered by a compressor and uh, what is the mechanism of these instabilities and what happens really during uh, these instabilities. But before that, let us first all try to understand what we mean by an instability in the first place. Let us try to understand um, or we'll, let us try to define instability and from there we will talk about instability as applied to a compressor. Now, we have if you have uh, undergone certain courses in physics and equilibrium and so on, you probably are familiar with stability or instability as a general term. So, we are, we are referring to that in this context also in that fashion. Basically, what we refer to as stability of a compressor is the fact that if a compressor or if a system is perturbed or disturbed from its equilibrium position, if the perturbation or disturbance is removed and the system returns to its initial or original state, then we refer to this system to be a stable system. That is exactly what we talk about when we, when we talk about a compressor as well, that if the compressor operation is perturbed by some downstream condition like a throttling of the nozzle or, or uh, something like that, then if that perturbation um, cause of course, that will lead to certain change in compressor operation. Now, once that perturbation is removed, if the compressor returns to its original state, then we say that the compressor operation is stable and if it does not return to its original state and if uh, the compressor operation enters into an entirely different mode with all kinds of problems, then we refer to this state of operation as an unstable or instable mode of operation of the compressor. We refer to this operation as that instability has set in into this compressor operation. So, stability what in, in, the, in this context of a compressor is basically related to the response of a compressor to a disturbance which perturbs the compressor operation from a steady operating point. And if the disturbance is transient, the performance will be considered stable if the system returns to its original state of equilibrium. If the response is to drive the operation away from the operating or original point, then the operation or performance is unstable. So, the compressor could depending upon its mode, it could operate in either of these uh, uh, regimes. It could either return to its original state where we say that the compressor is indeed stable or it could also happen that the compressor does not return to its original state and that is referred to an unstable mode of operation of the compressor. So, these are the uh, different uh, issues that we are going to uh, 
discuss in today's talk, what are these unstable or modes of instabilities that a compressor is likely to encounter. So, let us now talk about the different types of instabilities that a compressor will encounter. We can classify uh, instabilities encountered by a compressor into broadly into two types. One is uh, known as an operational instability and the other is known as aerodynamic instability. So, th there are two areas of compressor performance that relate to stability. Basically, one is to do with operational stability, other is aerodynamic stability. Now, operational stability involves matching the performance characteristics of the compressor with the downstream components. Aerodynamic stability is the limitation of steady operation um, of the compressor due to what are known as surge and stall. So, we will spend a lot of time discussing about the aerodynamic stability, because this course is primarily dedicated to aerodynamics of compressors and turbines and other turbo machines. So, uh, but let us also try to understand operational stability as well. Now, operational stability as uh, we have just seen relates to relates the compressor to certain downstream components as well. That is, if the downstream components kind of perturb the compressor operation, what happens to the overall operation of the compressor and so on. So, that mode of stability is basically referred to as the operational stability. And here we consider not just the compressor, we consider com components which are also um, kind of dependent on the compressor or components which kind of influence the compressor performance as well. And what are these different components? It could be downstream components like the combustion chamber, the turbine, the nozzle and so on. So, these are the components which can kind of influence the compressor performance. So, operational stability will also take into account all these components put together and their effect on the compressor performance. So, in operational stability, the complete compressor uh, system including the inlet ducts, guide vanes, the rotor stators of the compressor and um, the exhaust systems are considered. And operational stability basically depends upon the rate of change of pressure rise or pressure drop as the mass flow rate varies. System stability is established when the rate of change of compressor pressure rise with mass flow is algebraically less than the rate of change of throttle pressure drop with mass flow. Well, the last statement looks a little confusing. I will try to explain that in, in one of the next slides, which I will talk about, where I will try to explain what I mean by this last statement saying that the stability is established when the rate of change of compressor pressure rise with mass flow is um, algebraically uh, greater than the sum of the or uh, less than the sum of that of the throttle mass flow. So, let us try to understand this in little more detail. Now, for that we will again take a look at um, a compressor map a very schematic of a typical compressor map. We will try to look at what we mean by this particular statement and how we can analyze operational stability of a compressor. So, I have here a typical line operating line of the com well, compressor speed line. What is denoted here by the solid line refers to the compressor operation and what is denoted here by the dotted line refers to the, uh, uh, the characteristics of a throttling device or a flow device. It could be a nozzle or it could be some other component which is downstream of a compressor and that can change the compressor operation. So, solid line refers to the compressor operation, this line refers to a throttling operation. So, there are three different modes of operation I have shown here. Let us take a look at the first one. Here we have the compressor characteristic shown by this line and the throttling characteristic shown by this. So, the throttling characteristic intersects the compressor characteristics at this point which is denoted here. Now, according to what we had discussed in the last class as well as in the earlier slides, this line which is shown here should be an operating a stable operating line. Any point here should be stable and any point to the left of this should be unstable. Let us take a look at why that is true. So, if you look at this line of intersection a point of intersection here that is lying on a region where the compressor operating or uh, compressor map has a negative slope. Now, when the slope is negative, it means that as the throttling device is operated, let us say you increase the throttling pressure, uh, 
with an increase in throttling pressure it leads to or uh, the with an increase in throttling basically means that the mass flow is reduced. So, as the mass flow is reduced what happens here is that there is a corresponding increase in the pressure rise across the compressor and therefore, that corresponds to a region where the operation should be stable because you are throttling it the pressure is increasing and therefore, that is what exactly should be happening. Now, let us take a look at the second plot here the second one shown here where the throttling characteristic intersects the compressor line on this curve here on the left hand side of the surge line and that is the intersection point here. So, here what we see is that the slope of the throttling line is less than the slope of the compressor line compressor operation. So, compressor characteristic has a steeper slope than the throttling characteristic. So, this means that since the slopes are different here the rate let us say we consider the rate of change of throttling mass flow rate of change of throttle and we compare that with the rate of change of compressor characteristic. So, as your throttling uh, characteristics are uh, changed rate of change of that is now less than the rate of change of the pressure drop across the compressor which means that as you throttle more and more the pressure drop across the compressor is less than what it should have been and therefore, what will happen is since the pressure drop is low it will lead to a scenario where the since the throttling ma uh, mass flow uh, rate of change of throttle mass flow is larger it will lead to further decrease in mass flow and so on there and, and uh, again since the slope of the compressor is still higher it could lead to further decrease in pressure ratio and this goes back and forth. So, you can clearly see here that if the throttling characteristics has a slope which is less than that of the compressor characteristic then that is a, a region where the compressor operation is going into an unstable mode of operation. So, this is a typical example of an operational instability. Now, the other extreme of this is something that is theoretically possible, but we will see that aerodynamically that is something that cannot be really achieved that is the third characteristic that we have here where the compressor characteristic has a slope which is less than that of the uh, throttle characteristic. So, there is a difference in the slope between the compressor and the throttle and what causes that I mean what happens in such a scenario. So, if the throttle line has a slope which is greater than the compressor slope itself what it means is that as you increase the rate of change of or as the rate of change of throttle um, is varied the corresponding pressure ratio or drop in pressure ratio is lower than um, that of the corresponding rate of change of mass flow. And therefore, what happens is as the mass flow is changed here since that rate is higher than the rate of change of pressure drop then it means that the pressure drop does not fall at the same rate as that of the mass flow and therefore, this could lead to us at least theoretically could lead to a stable operation of the compressor which means that we are not really in an unstable mode here even though we are operating on the left hand side of this line which is theoretically supposed to be an unstable zone of operation. But what we see is that it is in fact theoretically possible that we can still operate we can still have an operational stability uh, even while operating on the left hand side of the performance curve and uh, so theoretically it should be possible for us to operate on that side. But what we will see next is that that is the region where aerodynamic stability cannot be achieved and that is what the next topic that we are going to talk about that is to do with aerodynamic stability of an axial compressor and that is something of more little more significance to us because we are talking about um, aerodynamics of compressors right now and so understanding aerodynamic stability probably would be of a little more significance to us. So, what do we mean by aerodynamic stability? Now, aerodynamic stability basically refers to the compressor system and its ability to maintain or deliver a higher or increase in pressure rise even when there is a perturbation in the mass flow to a lower value. That is as you perturb the mass flow to a lower mass flow ability of the ability of the compression system to 
either maintain the pressure itself or increase the pressure um, uh, for lower mass flow, which is what happens if you remember on a compressor curve as you keep going from the choke limit to the peak pressure as you decrease mass flow you are actu actually getting a better higher and higher pressure ratio up to the peak pressure point where the slope is kind of 0 and beyond that to the left hand side is where a, a drop in pressure a drop in mass flow will also lead to corresponding drop in pressure ratio which is not obviously a desirable characteristic because it leads to aerodynamic instability so this part of the compressor characteristic which has a positive slope is a region containing subsystem stall or complete instability which could lead to surge. So, stall and surge are those two instabilities which will get initiated if you are to operate on the left hand side of the curve. So, in this region as we have already seen operational stability may still be possible, but aerodynamic stability is not possible. So, let me uh, explain that little better. So, this is a typical compressor characteristics because it is a rather flat curve as compared to what actually happens in compressors where you could have a sudden drop in certain conditions. Now, here the uh, dotted lines indicate throttling characteristics as we have seen in the last uh, picture as well. There are three different characteristics shown here given by A, B and C. These are three different throttling characteristics and the solid line corresponds to the compressor characteristic itself. So, between points A and B or between these lines uh, throttling characteristics of A and B as we have seen, these characteristics intersect the compressor characteristics uh, where the compressor, the slope of the compressor uh, performance is negative. Therefore, these lines correspond to uh, stable operation of the compressor itself. Now, here uh, what we have is that the let us consider let us say point A. Now, here we have an increase or uh, between point A and B increase in the energy input would always be greater than the corresponding increase in losses in the compressor and therefore, you continue to get a higher and higher efficiency. At point B and beyond that higher the uh, input energy the losses encountered by the compressor is higher than the input energy itself which means that we are beginning to lose efficiency beyond this point B. So, beyond operating point of B, we kind of start losing efficiency and beyond point C, the loss in efficiency becomes so high that the compressor operation itself is unstable because of the initiation of aerodynamic instabilities like stall or surge. So, between these points or lines A and B, where we could operate the compressor in a stable manner, but you would like to operate it as high a, an efficiency as possible which is where uh, which is probably close to the point B where the rate of energy input continues to be much higher than the rate of losses or increase in losses. Beyond point B the losses kind of start building up and then energy input and the losses kind of there is a huge mismatch between that you begin to lose efficiency there. So, as we have seen it is still possible to operate um, on the negative slope of the uh, compressor map, but that is only an operational stability from the operational stability point of view, but that is the region where the compressor operation is aerodynamically unstable and you obviously cannot operate in that region where compressor is aerodynamically uh, unstable. So, let us now start discussing about see we have been talking about instabilities in great detail and what is meant by instability like operational instability and the aerodynamic instability. Let us discuss about the aerodynamic instability in little more detail. Now, I think I mentioned in the last class that when we were talking about multi stage compressor characteristics that there are primarily two modes of instabilities that a compressor can encounter. One is to do with uh, stall and the other is to do with uh, surge. Now, we will first take up stall and uh, understand stall in little more detail before we move on to surge. So, stall and surge are those two instability modes, uh, surge being the extreme instability and stall is probably a precursor to surge in some sense. 
So let us take a um, stall first and what we mean by stall and what are the different types of stall that a compressor can encounter. So stall basically um, can be um, attributed to if you, if you have undergone a basic aerodynamics course, if you have looked at uh, flow past an airfoil, as you increase the angle of attack of an airfoil beyond a certain angle, you know that the airfoil will stall. So, in, com in, in the compressor also we encounter a phenomenon which is in some way uh, similar to what you have learnt in the C L versus alpha curve for example, that beyond a certain alpha or angle of attack the, the airfoil stalls. So, if you look at it from a very simple uh, perspective, compressor stall also in some sense originates or begins from um, kind of an airfoil stall itself. Now, there are two types of stall that we can uh, associate with a compressor operation. One is to do with individual blade stall and the other is known as rotating stall. Now, individual blade stall occurs when the entire blade row would stall at once and this is something that one would encounter or see if you look at let us say an airfoil or a set of an airfoils like in cascade. We have already discussed about cascade and one while carrying out let us say a cascade experiment since all the airfoils are at the same stagger and uh, as you change the incidence, incidence of all the blades change simultaneously and so if there is stall encountered on one of the blades it should be uh, it should be the case that all the blades have stalled simultaneously because all of them have the same stagger and the incidence angles. So, since all these airfoils are identical like in a cascade all of these blades are likely to stall and that is basically referring to an individual blade stall. Well, but in an actual compressor we, are, we do not really have a scenario where all the blades are um, because it is in a um, cylindrical coordinate sense and unlike a cascade a linear cascade where they are all uh, arranged in a linear fashion. In an in actual compressor one is likely to encounter what is known as a rotating stall and we will discuss about rotating stall in little more detail and what is meant by rotating stall. So, rotating stall is the most common type of stall that uh, one would encounter in an axial compressor. Rotating stall would basically involve progression around the blade annulus of a stall pattern in which one or more adjacent blade passages are instantaneously stalled and then cleared for unstalled flow as the stall cell progresses. That is, in rotating stall one would have alternate um, stalling and unstalling of either one blade or a group of blades. That is, there would be a certain stall cell which would continuously move along the annulus. This is because the, the rotor it itself has a rotation and therefore, the stall cell continuously moves which is why it is known as rotating stall. So, either one or a group of adjacent blades would be stalling and this stall cell progressively moves along the annulus of the compressor itself. Let us try to understand what uh, is the mechanism of rotating stall and how it propagates. Now, let us consider a set of blades um, of an, a typical axial compressor that you see here. Uh, so, let us say let us assume for the moment that due to some um, reason it could be because of the incoming flow being non-uniform or because of some local uh, issues with the stagger of one of these blades or set of these blades that the incidence angle to one of these blades exceeds the design value leading to stalling of the blades. As you know that if this is you can kind of compare this with uh, an airfoil characteristic C L alpha characteristic as you keep increasing alpha beyond a certain angle the flow stalls. So, something similar can be visualized here as well that the incoming flow to let us say either one blade or a set of blades has a higher incidence than what it should have been leading to separation from one of the surfaces of the blade leading to stall. So, what you see here is basically a stall cell what we refer to as a stall cell. Now, this increased incidence and resulting in a stall of this blade basically causes the flow to enter the adjacent blade also with a higher incidence, but at the same time it unloads the preceding blade. And since these blades are also moving, so the blades have a rotational direction in this direction. So, as these blades move 
and since the incidence conti continuously changes from one blade to another, what happens is the adjacent blade now sees a flow with a higher incidence than what it should have been, which means that this blade will now begin to stall. And as this blade adjacent blade stalls, what happens is that now this blade has undergone stall and because of this stall which this blade has uh, undergone, what basically happens is that this would unstall the previous blade which was earlier undergoing stall. This is owing to the fact that these blades are now or are also rotating uh, with the rotor or, or speed. Now, so as these blades rotate, the stall this blade which was earlier undergoing stall will now unstall and the stall now progresses to the next blade and this continues and um, therefore, what you see is that effectively one can see that the stall cell is now moving in a direction which is opposite to that of the rotor rotation itself. So, rotating stall usually has a uh, direction of propagation in a direction opposite to that of the rotor. So, here we have visualized one blade which is undergoing stall. It is possible that there could be multiple blades which are un undergoing stall and you may have multiple stall cells in fact, uh, propagating along the annulus of the compressor. We will also see some of these examples in some of the later slides. So, this is a typical mechanism by which rotating stall occurs. In fact, in the next lecture that we will discuss, basically we will be attributing rotating stall to the effects uh, to do with the incoming flow itself. That is, if the incoming flow is non-uniform or what we refer to as a distorted inflow, that has an effect in, in initiating rotating stall in axial compressors. So, as I mentioned, you could also have uh, more than one set of stalls or stall cells moving along the annulus like you see here in this example, you have multiple stall cells which are propagating um, along the tip of the compressor blade. So, you could have multiple number of stall cells, you could have either one stall cell or you could have number of stall cells and in fact, it has been observed that there are as high as 9 stall cells which have been observed experimentally. So, between 1 to 9 or more stall cells are possible and um, so, what we also see is that um, these number of stall cells also tell us something about the nature of stall themselves. That is either one could have a mildly progressing stall or one could have what is known as an abrupt stall. And so, we will also see what are these two different types of rotating stall initiation mechanisms that are possible. Now, it has also been observed that rotating stall if allowed to progress and continue will lead to another instability or an extreme instability of operation of the compressor which is known as surge. We will discuss surge in little detail later on. The rotating stall often precedes surge and we have seen that the rotating stall propagates in a direction opposite to that of the rotor rotation and you could have rotating stall frequency uh, as high as 50 percent of the rotor frequency itself. You could also have stall in different types. You could have what is known as part span stall. That is, if this, if you consider this to be the annulus of the compressor, this being the hub and this being the tip of the compressor, you could have stall which is extending only up to a part of the span. It is not extending from the tip all the way to the hub, but there are multiple stall cells as you see here. Or you could have full span stall as you can see here, stall cell is extending all the way from the tip to the hub or you could have the entire annulus itself which has stalled which is what would happen if uh, we approach or enter into surge which is why I mentioned that rotating stall often precedes surge. Now, uh, rotating stall can as I mentioned be initiated by a variety of reason, reasons the most common being off design operation and uh, the other common reason for initiation of rotating stall is inflow distortion. That is, if the incoming flow to the compressor itself is non-uniform, there could be small pockets or regions where the local flow incidence approaching the compressor rotor would be much higher than the design incidence leading to initiation of stall in some of those blades and once initiated it will start begin to propagate and if conditions are favorable then the stall propagation is uh, continues and it develops further and in some cases it can also uh, be dissipated if the conditions are not really favorable. <coughs>
The other reason for um, rotating stall initiation could be um, a slight mismatch in some of the blades having slightly higher stragger or a slightly different profile due to certain manufacturing defect and so on. So, once this kind of a compressor enters into certain slightly off design condition, it is possible that these blades which have a slight mismatch in stagger or um, profile will initiate rotating stall. And I have also mentioned that the number of stall cells can be as high as 9 in certain cases which have been observed or as low as 1 and number of these stall cells is also associated with the type of stall. So, there are two types of stall which have been observed experimentally. One is to one is known as progressive stall and the other is known as abrupt stall and some of the latest literature refer to these modes of stall as the modal inception of stall or spike initiated stall. That is, if in some cases a stall is initiated in a progressive manner in a mild manner, it is basically also referred to as modal inception of stall or you could have an abrupt or sudden initiation of stall, it is also referred to as spike initiated stall. Now, in progressive stall, we have a gradual reduction in total pressure ratio after initiation of stall, whereas in abrupt stall, there is a discrete jump or decrease in the pressure ratio as stall is initiated. Now, progressive stall is usually associated with multiple stall cells, we could have more number of stall cells which is why one would have a progressively decreasing pressure ratio and uh, in an abrupt stall it has been observed that it is initiated with one stall cell, but that is a larger stall cell extending all the way from the hub to tip. So, progressive stall or uh, modal stall inception usually is associated with multiple stall cells which are propagating. Abrupt stall or spike initiated stall is usually ref, um, associated with a single, a single stall cell which initiates this kind of a stall. So, if you look at uh, characteristics, compressor characteristics where we can try to understand these two modes of stall. Uh, on the graph that you see here on the left hand side, we have pressure rise versus flow. The compressor characteristic operating all the way from choke with decrease in mass flow or, or as we throttle the compressor leading to higher and higher pressure ratio, peak pressure ratio and then the pressure ratio begins to drop. So, this is a typical progressive or modal stall uh, inception, whereas on the right hand side what you see here is that the compressor characteristic continues to increase up to the peak pressure and then there is a discrete jump or drop in pressure ratio and the compressor enters into stall. So, this is a typical spike initiated stall or abrupt stall. Uh, which has been in encountered by this kind of a compressor. So, these are two different modes of uh, compressor stall which have been observed by different uh, uh, researchers and uh, they attribute the, the of course, there are a lot of mechanisms and theories which are have been kind of proposed on why this kind of stall mechanism is initiated and so on, which I guess will not go into details of that. Um, so, in let us say for example, we consider just the progressive stall. Let us try to look at what really happens when progressive stall is initiated. So, this uh, chart here basically shows us variation of stall pattern in a typical progressive stall. Well, not necessarily uh, true for all the cases, but this in this particular case what has been observed is how progressive stall kind of uh, uh, can be explained in uh, by using um, these characteristics. So, uh, let us say stall has been initiated um, as you uh, increase um, the or as you throttle the mass flow, we have an increase in pressure ratio, we reach the peak pressure point and since this is a progressive stall, we have a gradual decrease in the pressure rise characteristics. So, what really happens in this uh, scenario that in uh, just to mention here, in most of the compressors that we uh, encounter stall is initiated from the tip of the blade. So, which is basically referred to as a tip critical rotor or stall is initiated from the tip of the rotor, which is true for most of the compressors. Of course, there are exceptions also where stall could also be initiated from the hub, but th those are um, relatively rare. So, as you enter into the negative slope of the compressor characteristic, we have stall being initiated from the tip and as we progress further down, 
we have part span stall, we have multiple stall cells and then this extends to full span stall and then of course, we go into deep stall where the whole uh, large fraction of the annulus has stalled uh, flow. So, this is typically how a progressive stall would um, evolve and develop. Okay, so, um, having understood about rotating stall, let us now quickly look at the other mode of instability, which is probably a more serious mode of instability that is surge. Now, uh, I mentioned of course, that it is possible that um, when stall, when we enter into deep stall, full annulus is under stall, we could also lead this obviously could also lead to surge. Now, what happens in surge is a complete breakdown of stable operation of the compressor flow and there is a violent oscillation of mass flow back and forth along the length of the compressor. So, this is typical of a multi stage axial compressor. What basically happens is that as you are operating on the left hand side of the compressor characteristic, any decrease in mass flow rate will be accompanied by a corresponding or greater decrease in the pressure ratio and therefore, there is a drop in pressure ratio which may not be matching with the pressure ratio downstream and so that leads to a backflow uh, from the downstream all the way to the upstream of the compressor and so, so this kind of mass flow fluctuates back and forth in the compressor and as you can visualize this is a complete breakdown of the mass flow and leads to um, failure of the compressor operation itself, which eventually obviously also leads to failure of the engine could lead to engine shutdown and so on. So, that this is a very uh, extreme case of instability of the compressor, which obviously is something that all designers would want to uh, prevent and which is why I have been mentioning about surge margin, which is provided in all axial compressor operation that this is the band in which the compressor is stable and one should not exceed the surge margin because the compressor is likely to encounter surge. Now, surge is basically characterized by fluctuations in the average flow throughout the compressor and uh, in this case the net flow through the compressor can either be positive or negative and it is highly transient phenomenon. And this is different from a rotating stall, wherein there is still an average flow which is passing through the compressor and is constant with time. But during surge, the system obviously is unable to attain a stable match with a throttle which is downstream. Now, in the compressor operating line, we have seen the surge line, which basically denotes the locus of unstable operation of the compressor and surge obviously may lead to flame blowout in the combustion chamber and can obviously lead to substantial damage of the compressor itself. So, during a design of a compressor, there is a certain margin which has been provided by the designer, wherein one is recommended to operate the compressor which is known as the operating line and there is a difference between the operating line um, to the surge line. So, that is basically the surge margin, that is the margin which has been provided for operating this compressor, that is even under operate uh, off design conditions, uh, one should ensure that the off design operating point is still away from the surge line and it is not very close to the surge line, because if it is too close to the surge line, there is always a risk that the compressor might uh, get pushed into surge, which is obviously detrimental as we have seen. So, if you look at this uh, compressor map, which I had shown earlier as well, this is the surge line, it is the locus of all the surge points. If you join the surge point at different operating speeds, then we, we get what is known as the surge line and this dotted line is the engine operating line and so this difference is basically referred to as the surge margin and uh, modern day compressors are designed to operate with a very small or narrow surge margin of um, and that is basically to ensure that the compressor is operating with a fairly high efficiency delivering a high level of pressure ratio at the same time we would also want to ensure that the compressor does not move very close to the surge line because obviously that is quite risky. So, um, let us now look at some of these um, um, examples, some examples of actual experiments which have been carried out several years ago. So, this is one classical example of uh, characteristics, a single stage characteristic as it is shown here. It is from a very old paper by Hubert in 1952, as you can see it is more than 50 years old, but this is still considered to be a classical paper because 
it, it explains a lot of the issues related to surge. So, here you can see it is um, compressor operation at two different speeds and what you can see is also what I have referred to as hysteresis. I will probably explain this in little more detail in the next class, but what you see here is as the compressor enters into surge between points A to B, this as you can see there is a sudden drop in the performance characteristic and as you try to recover the compressor operation from its surge line or surge point back to stable operating range, it does not trace the same path. And this loop as you see here is basically referred to as hysteresis. You might be familiar with hysteresis of magnetic materials, paramagnetic materials. So, this is a similar aspect which is observed in compressors as well as, as the compressor enters into surge or deep stall and if you recover from the surge or deep stall operation, the operating points are slightly different and that is attributed to hysteresis. I will explain that in more detail in the next class. Now, uh, there is one more example that I would like to show here. Uh, this is from um, again an old paper by Greitzer uh, and his group at MIT and um, so this is also explaining the hysteresis and um, associated with surge and its initiation. So, as the compressor uh, operation is taken from its choke point all the way to peak pressure and you can see there is an abrupt stall and surge operating uh, or the compressor basically enters into a surge mode of operation and once it is taken out of that mode of operation, it takes a different path and that is basically attributed as I mentioned to hysteresis. So, that is also seen in this particular uh, characteristic as you can see. Now, what Greitzer also observed in his experiments was the effect of rotating stall and surge and you can see how these um, instabilities were actually measured in terms of velocity variation. So, if you were to measure variation of velocity in a compressor which is let us say undergoing rotating stall, one would see fluctuations as you can see um, several fluctuations within a second which means that the frequency of rotating stall is several mag magnitudes higher than that of surge. You can see this in surge, one second has probably just one or few fluctuations whereas in rotating stall you have several fluctuations taking place in even in a second. So, the frequency of uh, rotating stall is usually at least one order magnitude higher than that of surge and in surge you can see the uh, fluctuations which are basically axisymmetric and uh, the flow basically moves back and forth with a frequency which is much less than that of uh, rotating stall. As I mentioned rotating stall can have frequencies as high as 50 percent of the rotor frequency itself and which means that rotating stall can indeed have very high frequencies. Surge on the other hand is not related to really related to the rotor frequency, it is just axisymmetric uh, motion, motion of uh, flow back and forth in the compressor which could have very low frequencies usually one order less than what uh, is encountered in rotating stall. So, this is just to summarize the different modes of instabilities what we have discussed in today's lecture. Of course, there are a few more aspects that need to be discussed and I guess I will take that up in the next class where I will also talk about what I mentioned in the last slide about hysteresis and so on and uh, we will obviously discuss lot more details of um, instabilities and inflow conditions on instabilities later on. So, in today's lecture basically we discussed about instability in general and instability as applied to compressors and what we mean by instability of axial compressors. You have seen there are two modes of instabilities in general, the operational instability and the aerodynamic instability and uh, in uh, we have also seen that even though it is theoretically possible to operate on the positive slope of an axial compressor map where operational stability can be maintained it is aerodynamically not unstable and there are different modes of aerodynamic instability. We have seen rotating stall and surge being the major modes of instability. Rotating stall obviously involves a set of stall either one or more stall cells moving along the annulus of the compressor in a direction that is opposite to that of the rotor rotation and uh, rotating stall could be either part span or full span or deep stall. So, you could have 
uh, either of these modes in rotating stall. Surge is an extreme instability which is encountered in an axial compressor, wherein the compressor operation there is a complete breakdown of stable uh, operation of the compressor and it is a highly transient phenomenon where there is a movement of mass flow along the length of the compressor back and forth and it is axisymmetric. Rotation, uh, rotating stall is not axisymmetric whereas, surge is axisymmetric that means, the entire annulus will be undergoing this instability whereas, in rotating stall we have seen that it does not affect the entire annulus it affects only part of the annulus which is why rotating stall is not axisymmetric surge is uh, indeed axisymmetric. We have also seen that rotating stall can have very high frequencies of, a, of as high as uh, 50 percent of the rotor uh, frequency itself. Surge on the other hand is characterized by very low frequencies, uh, usually one order of magnitude less than that of rotating stall. So, these are the different instability modes that um, kind of affect the performance of the compressor and it is important for us to understand this, because this limit of operation of the compressor puts a limit on the operation of the whole engine itself and engine operation obviously cannot take place at points which are beyond the op stable operating limits of the compressor. And that is why we had uh, I was emphasizing the importance of understanding these instabilities and uh, stable operating modes of the compressor. So, in the next class as I mentioned uh, we will take up um, instabilities little more con uh, discussion on instabilities we will talk about the effect of distortion on the performance or, or stability of the compressor. We will also spend some time on discussion on methods of controlling these instabilities, because obviously we would like to control instabilities. At the same time we would also like to operate the compressor as close as possible to the highest efficiency point, which incidentally might lie very close to the surge line. And so, uh, we would also like to explore mechanisms or methods by which these instabilities if initiated can be controlled, so that the range of operation of the compressor can be extended. So, we will take up some of these topics for discussion in the next lecture.